Hi there, everybody. This cocoon is violently shaking and moving. And that's because we are witnessing the birth of one of my new magnificent moths. The species is an Opodiptera. I have two species of them. Opodiptera eucalypti and Opodiptera helena. And I think this specimen will be a eucalypti, but I could be wrong. These species live in Australia and New Zealand and they tolerate extreme heat and drought. That's because, as you know, Australia can be pretty harsh and dry and extremely hot. So their cocoons are very tough and hard, like our rock. That's why this moth is putting so much effort into crawling out of its cocoon. Here you can see a small bump, and this bump is the exact spot where the moth will emerge from. It's just not using it, it's not exiting the cocoon on its own strength. It has a chemical uh, that helps it emerge, serapeptase, and serapeptase is an enzyme that dissolves the silk by attacking specific proteins in the silk which basically dissolve it. It's like a digestive enzyme or comparable to, comparable to that. Like the enzymes in your stomach or saliva that help break down your food. This moth secretes an enzyme from its mouth that breaks down the silk. It's going to be in here and struggle for a while. Also, apart from the enzyme, it has small hooks uh, on the pla place where its wings are attached. And by flapping them, it helps scratch the surface of the silk. So now we are a few minutes in. And we can see the hole where the moth is trying to emerge from, uh, violently, violently shaking. It's very close to escaping from the cocoon now. It will just be a few minutes time, maybe I can catch it on camera. First thing it will do is pop out a few legs and pull itself out. There we go. Let's see what species or cutie will be. Oh yes, yeah, very close now. If I keep filming I will catch it on camera. We have all the time in the world for you, cutie. very close now. You can already see the moth in there. It's just trying to push away the final strands of silk that are blocking it from escaping. But when they're like this it's usually very close. Almost. You're almost there. Oh, very close now. I can see one part of it already exiting the cocoon.
Come on, you can do it. I was expecting your arrival. I hope its brothers and sisters will also emerge soon. I'm gonna need more of them for a pairing. Oh, Cocoon is even moving now. Maybe now we can have a nicer view. Come on, do your best. You're worth it. Very, very close. I feel the urge to help it, but I shouldn't. That ru ruined the point of this video. Interestingly, many hairs are escaping from the cocoon. I think it's fluff from the moth that's struggling to violently es escape. There we go. Oh, very close. We are getting very close. There it is. I just, its face is going to pop out as you can see. I can see part of its body already. Yes, there it is. It's free. From now, in a few seconds, going to escape and what it will do is it will yeah push itself out like this and it will have to get a, a pair of legs out first so it can grab the cocoon and pull itself out oh it's nearly there it's struggling nearly my friend we are all eagerly waiting your arrival there we go It's using the same muscles it uses when it flaps the wings to escape from the cocoon. Flapping its wings is worth making this uh, contracting motion here. There we go. I'm very curious to see if it will be Ophidoptera eucalypti or Helena. I suspect it's a eucalypti because Helena cocoon cocoons are not that tough, but I could be wrong here. There we go, it's free. Oh, I just stopped. Probably tired from all the struggling. I understand. Ah, there we go. There we go. You are one healthy specimen. And I see you're a female. Oh, that's nice. You're going to pull yourself out of that cocoon now. Mm. It should do this on its own strength. I'm uh, trying to, to, to suppress the urge to help. Ah, there we go, there we go, very nice. Let's give you a nice place to emerge. Wow, its body is quite large, the species is larger than I thought. So where are we gonna put it now? I think I'll put it here on the wall beside my parrot and we'll look for a nice place to emerge. Come on there, cutie. Come on, there we go. There we go. Beautiful. I think judging by the wings, we have a eucalypti. I think it's Ophidoptera eucalypti. But I don't want to be too, too quick to judge because it hasn't inflated the wings yet. 
So of course. Oh no wait, it's actually a Helena moth. I can tell now from the ocelli on the hindwing. Wow, beautiful. This is a really a euphoric moment for me. I've never seen this species. It's Ophidoptera Helena, people. Wow. Thanks to all of you. Thanks for watching. Look at the hindwing spot. This eye is Ophidoptera Helena. I'm actually euphoric right now. It's just found a spot to inflate the wings. It will sit here for a long time and expand the wings, so I'm gonna leave it alone and tend to my other species, while this one, I hope it will be a perfect specimen. Thank you all for watching. Well guys, there she is. Here's the moth that all of you have been watching emerge today. It's a female of the eucalyptus gum moth, Opodiptera eucalypti. And, um, it's not a Helena as I first suspected, though I have that species too, so yeah, it uh, was hard to tell initially when it was still hatching. It's a beautiful female and I think when, uh, because this, uh, these uh, females are hatching, I think it means the males will uh, soon hatch as well. These moths, uh, as the name suggests, their host plant is eucalyptus mainly. Okay, that's why they have the scientific name Opodiptera eucalypti. And they're pretty cute. Just look at her face. Took her a long time to struggle out of that cocoon. Beautiful wings. Nice colors too. And she's very fluffy. Very nice. Thanks for watching. I promise you that in a few weeks I'll have a video of the larva. Because I have so many cocoons of these. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have a pairing. Ophodiptera eucalypti. Eucalyptus gum moth. Beautiful. Thank you all for watching.